All right, welcome to Graphs and Graphic Techniques for Math 101. Okay, so just a basic overview of some of the kinds of graphs that you will generally see in math, as well as maybe a few that you might see in a VET situation. All right, so graphs are a visual way. Well, let me get my pen working here. So they are a visual way. Let me move that over. Of representing data to show the relationship between one set of numbers and another set. Most graphs have a vertical axis, also called the y axis, and a horizontal axis, also called the x axis. Each axis will be divided into units. Some examples of units often used in the medical field are heart rate, respiration, pulse over time, weight, and so on. Okay, so one of the main things we look at for graphing is something called the Cartesian coordinate plane, after um, the man who created it, René Descartes. He's a French mathematician, I believe. So for a Cartesian coordinate plane, the two axes divide the graph up into four quadrants. Most medical graphs will focus on quadrants 1 and 4. So the quadrants are, let me go ahead and shade this. This is quadrant 1. Quadrant 2. Quadrant, oops, back up. 3 and quadrant 4. Okay. So it goes in a kind of strange order, but... That is how it is. So we have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So the main ones we use are quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 in um, the medical field. So what we're asked to do is plot the points on the given graph. So we're given a set of xy points. And I'm going to go ahead and label my axes here with the x and y values. So the x1 is the horizontal and the y is the vertical. Alright, so when you plot points, you always start at the point in the center, which is called the origin. A good way to remember that is the origin where everything begins. So you always start there, and then when you have a set of coordinates, so an x and a y, I'm going to rewrite this as a coordinate set, 5, 7, this is telling you, from the origin, you're going to go 5 on the x values and then 7 on the y values. So two ways you could do this. You could start by counting out the x values and then going to the y values, or you could start by counting out the y values and then to the x. I'll do both so you'll see you'll end up at the same number. So first we'll do the x values, so positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're told to go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so this is the point that I'm supposed to be at. 5, 7. Let's see if it also works if I count with the y's first. So for y's, I would say up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then with x values, I would say positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What do you know? It's the same point. All right, so it doesn't matter if you count out with the x values first or the y values first. You will end up at the same point. Let me go ahead and draw that point back in. All right, so the next one we're looking at is negative 4, 3. Now what this one says is we're going to go back 4 or negative 4 on the x values. So 1, 2, 3, 4 into the negative values. Notice this is the negative numbers for x, and these are the negative numbers for y. Okay, and then we're going to go down 3. Or sorry, up 3, because that's a positive 3. 1, 2, 3. Once again, you could find this by starting on the y values first and then counting out the x's. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is 6, negative 5. Okay, go ahead, try plot this one by yourself. All right, 
I tend to normally plot just using the x value first and then the y, because that's normally just how the numbers are set up, so I'll go ahead and do that. We're going to go 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 6, negative 5. I'll go ahead and write out the other numbers in their coordinate set points, and then finish up by graphing them. Okay, so let's see. We have negative 10 and negative 7. So they're both negative. So negative 10, negative 7. Those points meet up. Let's see. Right here in the center. So I'll go ahead and plot that. Negative 10, negative 7. And then let's go ahead and do the 0, 5, 0. So positive Oh, interesting, zero. How do I how do I graph that? Well, when I hit the x value, I'm just going to stay where I am because I'm not going to go up or down for the y values. I just stay at zero. Now, the interesting thing about this point is it's a special kind of point because it's sitting along my x-axis. So that point has a special name, and it is called the x-intercept because it is sitting on the x-axis. Okay, so that's a special point. Now the next one is actually also going to be a special point. Let me go ahead and pick another color to use to graph with. Alright, so the next point, I'm going to go ahead and plot it, is 0, 5. Right here. Now this one is also special because notice it crosses, or it's sitting on, the y-axis. So this one is going to be called the y-intercept. Okay. So those are the two ones that have special names, y-intercept and x-intercept. Alright, so we went ahead and practiced plotting those. Let's go ahead to the next problem. Alright, so one concept is called the line of best fit. So sometimes when you collect data in the real world, it may not always make a nice straight line on your graph. So what you have to do is just sort of estimate things a bit. So let's go ahead. We have this following data for the weight of a kitten that it gains each week in pounds. We're given a graph here. So notice my what's normally the x-axis is just going to be the positive values. And then what's normally the y-axis is also going to be just the positive values. And the y-axis is called pounds, and the x-axis is called weeks old. So, the weeks old is my x, and the weight is my y. Now what does this say? This says at one week old, the weight is 0 0.5 pounds. Well, that's going to be right here. Now you might say, wait, but that's zero. But notice, looking down here at how the points tick off, we're counting in twos. Two, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. All right, so then we have 2 and 0 0.75, so almost at 1. And then, let's see, 4, 1.5. 4 and 1.5 is about there. Between 1 and 2 is 1.5, right there. And then we have 6, which is at 2, so 6 up at 2. Then we have 8 and 2.55, so a little over a half. So it's going to be about here and here, so that is about there. Then we have 10 and 3. 10 and 3, which is going to be 10 and 3 right here. So you can go ahead and pause the video and try graph 11 and 3.25 and 12 and 4. So 11 and 3.25, well, this is the 11 mark. So 11 and 3.25 is about here. It's in between the halfway point there. And then 12 and 4, so 12 and 4. All right, so notice if you look at these points, they're not in a perfect straight line. Okay, they kind of do a little squiggle pattern here. But what we want to do is just make a nice straight line and use this to estimate things. 
Okay, it's not going to be perfect, but we're just finding the line of best fit. So when we do that, we're not doing this with a calculator, we're just doing this by hand, so it's going to be a pretty rough estimate. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line through what looks like the middle of my points. Okay, so this is my line of best fit. And hopefully I can use this to then predict some of the other values. Let me go ahead and actually draw this out a little farther. All right, it's line of best fit. Okay, so now we plotted the data points, we drew the line of best fit. So part C, use the line of best fit to predict the weight of a kitten at 15 and 18 weeks old. All right, so we're trying to find the weight of a kitten at 15 weeks. So where's 15? 15 is here, so I'm going to do, just draw a line up to see where it crosses my, aha, right here. What point is that? That is almost at 5. So it looks like um, 4.75 pounds, roughly. I'm being very, making a very rough estimate here. So it looks like the weight is 4.75 pounds at 15 weeks. Okay, so we made that prediction. Now let's go ahead and make the other prediction. You can go ahead and pause the video and try it yourself. But for 18 weeks, Go ahead, plot that. Looks like it's about there. Graphing that up here. That looks like it's about at 5.75. So, the weight of the kitten is four, oh, 5.75 at 18 weeks. Alright, so we just used our chart to predict the weight of the kitten if it continues growing at that pattern. And there we go, line of best fit and predictions. So the next, so one of the other types of graphs you might come across is concentration and absorbency. So for example three, we're going to plot the following points on the graph first, and then we'll go ahead and draw a line of best fit and do a few other applications for this problem. All right, so plotting the points, we need one, 0 0.5. Let's see, Um, concentration is me, my x values, and absorbency are my y values. Okay, so let's say we have one, 0 0.05 as our first point. One, 0 0.05, so let's see, this is 0 0.1. So that means halfway between this would be 0 0.05. So one, two, three, four, five, half of that, it's about there. That's a rough estimate there. So then we want 2, 10. So let's see, 1, 2. So 2, 0 0.10. And next is 3, 1.5. So let's see, that's going to be 3, 1.5 is about here. So that's going in 1, 10, and 2. And then 4, 0 0.20. So 4 is here and counting up to 0 0.20, right up there. Then we have 5, 0 0.25. 5, 0 0.25 is right up there. Okay, graph is kind of odd because it skips a few steps here, so you had to kind of count that one out. But then the rest of them all go in fives. Bit of an error on my part when graphing this out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do line of best fit for B. So let's go ahead and uh, just... Yeah, that looks pretty good. Remember, this is all just by hand. It's a very, very rough estimate. You can learn how to do a line of best fit using a calculator, but right now we're just going over the basic concepts for graphing. Okay, so now what we want to do is use a line to predict the absorbency for an 8% concentration. So 8% concentration, those are my x values. So where is 8? 8 is right here in my graph. 
I'm going to go ahead and draw that up until it meets my graph. Boop, up here. Okay, so it's actually going up a bit. So where would it meet my graph? Well, this would be 0 0.35. So it looks like it would meet it around 0 0.36 maybe. Remember, this is just a rough estimate. So the absorbency would be around 3 point, oh, 0.36 for an 8% concentration. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and use D. Use the line to predict the concentration that has an absorbency of 0 0.3. All right, so we want now to find the concentration, and we're given the absorbency. So the absorbency of 0 0.3, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line out here until it hits my graph. Boop, right there. I'll go ahead and follow that down to see what value I hit. Aha! I hit 6. So my answer would be the concentration that has an absorbency of 0 0.3 would be 6%. Or you could write the sentence a different way. There are different ways to word that. All right. Okay, so that is it. We're using the line of best line of sorry, the line of best fit to go ahead and make some predictions for different things. So the next type of a graph we're going to look at is called an electrocardiogram or an ECG. So an ECG is a way to visualize the way that the electricity through flows through the heart. You probably see this in movies or something. It's that little thing that goes beep, beep in movies and hospitals. It is most often used to test for irregularities in how the heart functions. Okay, so we're not doing a real serious look at this. We're just going to go ahead and practice picking out where the values are on this graph. Okay, so normally you would have your voltage on the side. It's going to be in millivolts, MV. And then you'd have your time in seconds on the bottom. Okay, so notice I've gone ahead and labeled some of the key points here. We want to find the point for letter A, which is going to be here. So let's see, what would that value be? Well, down here, the X value, I know it's going to be half of 5, half of that. So that's going to be 0 0.25 down there. And then what is half of 0 0.25? That is 0 0.125. All right, so my time would be 0 0.125. Let me go ahead and there we go. And my voltage is 1. OK, so we found A. Let's go ahead and find the next one, B. So B, right up here. Well, that is down about here. So let's see, this time, we know that this was 0 0.25, and then here was 0 0.125. So that's going to be third of the way to 0 0.5. So let's see, 0 0.25 plus 0 0.125. So that's about roughly 0 0.375. Once again, these are really rough estimates here. All right, so 0.375, and then the voltage is 3. That one was a lot simpler. Oh, I forgot to write this as the coordinate set. So 0 0.1251 one, and 0 0.3753. Three. All right. What's the point that we're next going to look at? So the next point is F. All right, F is right here. 
So that looks like it's right in between 1 and 1 1.5. That's going to be 1.25. And then 2. So 0. Point, oh no, it's 1.25, sorry. 1.25 and 2. So my point is 1.25, 2. Okay, so let's take a look at the other two. If you want to go ahead and pause the video and try find the points for the other two, that's a good idea. Alright, so let's see. J is the next one. J is right here. Oh, this is way better. That's right on the line there. We have 2 and 0. So the time is 2. I'm sorry, time is... Oh, it is 2. 2. And the voltage is 0. 2, 0. Okay, last one. Let's see, what do we have? I. Aha, right here. Okay, so on the x values, it's almost at 2, so I'm going to go ahead and estimate that to 1.75. I just tend to stick in 25s. And then right here, which is in between negative 2 and negative 3, so negative 2.5. Okay, so notice um, the way I am estimating is just sort of based on this problem. So the way you might be estimating with other problems, you want to make sure to check how your facility might be doing that. And you'll go into greater detail on how to use these graphs. For now, it's just a basic overview on these. Okay, so we have 1.75 negative 2, oops, 0.5. Okay, so that's just a basic practice in reading a chart. Okay, so I believe that is it for these notes. The homework for this section is going to be in your La Lima page, so make sure to go ahead and check under the lecture notes. There is a homework for both the graphing section and the statistics section. Please email me if you have any questions.